interesting thought process. That's a great, great question. Oh, that's really hard. Oh my God, I didn't realize it was going to be like this. That's... Wow, that's a good question. Another uh, uh, good but difficult question. Welcome to Casual Conversations with your host, Mike Oppenheim. Hi, this is Mike Oppenheim, and you are listening to another episode of Casual Conversations, the spinoff podcast from Coffin Talk. And uh, if you go back in the Coffin Talk coffers, you'll see that early on we had an interview with the brilliant Kirk Nurmi, and he is actually back today, and I am so honored to have him on again. He's not only a brilliant, brilliant former lawyer, but he's also a current legal analyst, and he's also just a really good human and good person, so... It is my pleasure to introduce him. How are you today? Mike, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for that great introduction and and those kind words. It's nice to be uh, back talking with you. Yeah, likewise. Um, And I think the the main reason I wanted to have you back on was because you're one of the most articulate and intelligent guests I've ever had the luxury to speak with. But on top of that, recently in America, we had like a pretty... I don't want to say the ruling was controversial, but the fallout from the ruling was very controversial of Roe v. Wade, which is in for those who are in an international audience from 1973 until this year. That was the Supreme Court finding that made it so it was uh, illegal to ban abortion in any state until there was a heartbeat, I believe. But actually, since I'm not a legal expert, um, did I get that right? Is there anything you want to add or change? Well, technically, the Roe decision, it's been years since I've read it, but it dealt with really viability, not necessarily a heartbeat, but viability. Um, So that kind of became viability outside the womb, kind of became the threshold under Roe, at least originally. And uh, your your main field when you practiced was with the death penalty specifically, is that correct? Well, criminal defense, and then later on, once the experience was established, I started doing death penalty work, yes. Yeah. And what about on the way up, when you were studying law and everything, what was uh, the part of it that intrigued you the most? Well, you know, I went to law school with the idea of becoming a public defender. It's not what most you know, aspiring law students think about being, but I always believe that everyone, uh, you know, deserved the right to a, a good defense. Uh, the constitutional rights we have meant a lot to me. I went to law school a little bit later in life, so that's maybe why I never changed my uh, field like so many people would tell me, but uh, that was kind of my focus, and that was always uh, my interest, and that led me to an appellate clinic and, and arguing cases in front of the Wyoming Supreme Court, and then ultimately uh, my job with the Maricopa County Public Defender's Office, and then my work with the death penalty. And this is a weird question, but I'm curious. When people talk about like fame, there's a lot of like different definitions and different uses of the word. Um, for at least a brief period, but I would say a longer period, your name was actually somewhat famous in like American culture because uh, the trial you worked on, one of the many trials you were on, was it absurdly famous here? Would you ever use that word to describe that experience? Did you feel, quote-unquote, famous at any point? Well, you know, I always think of whatever anybody thinks about you is something that's outside of you, so I can't necessarily feel it as it, as it were. It's something that, you know, it's not something that is inherent within me and something that someone else uh, attributes to me, if you will. But certainly back in that time, I certainly, you know, was recognizable. My name was certainly recognizable, and I was, I was all over the TV and 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 radio and what have you, all the different court shows for a period of about two and a half years. Because Arius began in the public spotlight in January of 2013. We're coming up on 10 years, believe it or not, Mike, and um, didn't really exit the spotlight uh, in it, in its primacy anyway till. Uh, the middle of 2015, well, April 2015, she was sentenced. And of course, you know, it it still goes on to this day, as it were, because there's always uh, different programming, what have you, related to the case. It's just one of those infamous cases that will probably remain so for for a number of years. Yeah. And uh, have you ever been consulted by like another attorney who is going through something similar, like for advice on how to deal with, because again, I, I think it's important for our audience to understand Every person in this country has the legal right to a, def- a free a public defender. It's 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 a good right. It's a very important one. And someone has to defend people no matter how much people think they are guilty or not. And so that's essentially what some people don't like you for and then other people like me like really absurdly appreciate you for. So have you ever been consulted or asked about how to deal with that? You know, I've not. Um, I'm certainly open to that. I, I was coaching lawyers for a while to start making healthier lifestyle choices, et cetera. But, um, you know, I imagine it just goes to the fact that, you know, when you're in that situation, you're so busy, you don't even think you can put your head above water and start thinking about better ways to deal with it. You're just kind of in the foxhole. 
uh, as it were. And, you know, like we, we see cases coming up now. It, it always reminds me, you know, the Delphi murders. There was arrest in the Delphi murder case of the two young uh, girls in Indiana there. And the judge recused himself right away because there were YouTube videos of his children uh, posted online. So um, this subject matter in terms of the publicity and, and trials and, and what people are going to go through, because eventually a public defender is going to get uh, assigned to defend him is certainly something I speak about in public and would always be open to talking to somebody about, but it just just hasn't hasn't come to fruition yet. And since you mentioned um, health, I know we talked about it a little bit on the last podcast, and then I, I like I said, I follow you on social media. You've you've recently, I, w- I don't know if recent is the right word, but in the last ten years or so, really been on like a great health streak, and you're really into health. How is that going for you? One and two. How important do you think that would be to like really press impress upon younger people before it becomes an issue? Hey everyone, that's it for the free version of this podcast. If you want to hear the full one, just head over to MikeyOp.com and become a premium subscriber. That's M-I-K-E-Y-O-P-P dot com. Thanks for listening.